the Radio Wemo Breakfast. Kiwi. Kiwi. Two ad agencies battle it out in a smackdown contest to sell the unsellable. The winner takes home this Gruen trophy, now with extract of catafree. <laughs> Recently, we challenged two agencies to come up with a campaign to make Australians invade New Zealand. Tonight, it's payback time. We what you're hearing there is a show in Australia called The Gruen Transfer, and it's about to start on uh, the, um, the Comedy Central channel here in New Zealand as well. The host is Will Anderson, and he's here for the um, Comedy Festival and also to talk up the show as well. Will Anderson, hello and welcome along to the Radio Emma Show. Yeah, thank you very much for having me in. I'm glad they're finally uh, showing my little television show over here about a week after I leave. So people <laughs> yeah. will be going, oh, we should have gone and seen that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because um, the, the show is actually, it's been screening in Australia for a few years now. Yeah, it? that's right. We're about to go back and do our third series. So we started in 2008. So there's kind of two series in the can so far. So yeah. I think they're all going to play all those and then hopefully some new episodes will come over as well. What's the basic premise behind it? Well, basically it's kind kind of to lift the lid on advertising, why we buy what we buy, you know. The average uh, industry rule of thumb is we see 3,000 commercial messages a day, just as we walk around, really? as we look around. Newspapers, billboards, exactly. posters, Anytime TV. you go into a shop to buy anything, everything has advertising on it. You yeah. know, even in this studio, there's advertising for the radio there station there here. <laughs> you know, it, 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 like, yeah, there's advertising for little, uh, for New Zealand, for different yeah. little things around. And, uh, and, and that happens everywhere. But yeah. it's largely sort of critically unexplored. Yeah. So we wanted to uh, do a show that kind of, you know, showed people how it was all put together. Yeah. Um, and, and is it, I mean, is it targeted towards towards the, the average consumer or is it more of an industry sort of focused show? No, no, this is meant to be like a, you know, a, a show that anyone can watch. It's a light entertainment show. Think Seven Days if Seven Days was just about ads instead mm. of news. Okay. Like that's the kind of attitude we try to take to the table. We want this to be entertaining for people so that the next time they see an ad for example one of the things we talk about early on because we've had a lot of kiwis on the show because new zealand is regarded in the advertising industry as being one of the more cutting edge uh branches of the advertising industry it's yeah. a smaller industry they can take a few more risks they can do more creative work and one of the things we learnt was cultural differences between australia and new zealand in ads because we were talking about beer advertising yeah and in australia if you're making a beer ad you should always have four blokes in it because the industry rule is one guy drinking alone is a dangerous loner. <laughs> Two guys drinking together, gay. Yeah. Three guys drinking together, not right. Four right. guys, perfect, right? Yeah. In New Zealand, it's always three because four is considered a gang. So there you go. Oh, really? Yeah. And our, is that deep inside our psyche or something? That's right, apparently. Wow. Not allowed to put four in. Who knew? I know. But someone must have done the research at some point. Well, this is the great thing about the show. Quite often we we go behind the scenes to like you know say they've researched this and this is why they do this sort of thing or we've researched this and this is why they do this. And, and we kind of try to look at those promises that are made in ads as well. Like, you know, when the blah, blah, blah will say like, you know, so-and-so recommends this. Yeah. Last year on the show, we trademarked the trademark 9 out of 10 experts. So we can now officially put on anything, 9 out of 10 experts recommend dot, dot, dot. We own that. No one else, no one else can use it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, as consumers, we do have a fascination with advertising. We know we're being advertised too, but there's nothing better than a really entertaining ad, say, on TV. Oh, definitely. And I think when they're really good... They capture our imagination, and that is uh, part of what we try to do with the show. We kind of like try to point out the crappy ones, yeah, and like you know, uh, you know, all the stupid things they say. Like I saw one actually here on New Zealand TV for Oil of Olay, and it said helps fight the seven signs of aging. Yeah. And it started me thinking, what are the seven signs of aging? <laughs> what, you know, yeah, yeah. You know if okay. you're a man, you wear your pants around your nipples. If you're a woman, you wear your nipples around your pants. I don't know. You're right because they never explain it, do they? No. We, just, and we just we just accept it. Oh, yeah, of course, the seven signs. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, I've dyed my hair blue. Oh, that must be one of the seven <laughs> signs of aging. I'm much more interested in bingo. That must be one of the seven signs of yeah. aging. And and then, but when you see something really spectacular in an ad, it can kind of capture your imagination. Yeah, there is um, that style of ad that goes for being absolutely natural and 100 percent real. You know, mm. that um, that ad, that that the um, the ad comes into the person's living room and they're pretending they're hanging out with their family, and often a celebrity mm. represents that sort of um, that sort of ad. But, and, and they try to portray that everything's natural and real, but it's not really, though, is it? No, I love those ones. I love the ones where it's like, uh, oh, it's funny, you've surprised me here. Yeah. I, I was just eating these <laughs> chips. 
<laughs> these delicious chips. Oh, well, I guess seeing you've walked in with a camera, I'll talk to you about how delicious these chips are. Yeah. And, 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 it, and they do really do it as if, and I, 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 when I watch those ones, I just go, oh, those poor people. The there, invasion of their privacy. There's one in the show that you guys highlight. I think it's Zoot. Yeah, Zoot the, or something. the Zoot Review. And, um, and there's a, obviously an Australian ce- a celebrity in there, and she's, she makes up that that's her family. That's mm. who they're, but, uh, it's they're not. They're not actually her family. <laughs> No, it's it's shot in documentary style. She's talking about, uh, you know, the particular product that she feeds to her family. Yeah. Not her actually family. Yeah. Yeah, that was a tip off I got from somebody, and I was like, uh, so we try to go behind the scenes sometimes as well. well I we think probably because her family were too ugly. Mm. Uh, she's ashamed of her family. Right. She's probably got a family locked in some sort of, you know, what a shame. closet under the stairs <laughs> <laughs> while she makes all her money in ads. There's a competitive element to the show as well. Yes, we do this thing called the pitch, which is kind of the more, the probably the the most sort of famous segment from the show. And if they want to check out some clips, there's plenty of them on YouTube. But we get two ad agencies to come together to sell an unsellable concept. So in the first episode of the series, it's to make whale meat acceptable as oh. a food. Oh, that's very now, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> right? But I basically just sit at home trying to think up the darkest topics I can yeah. and then think, could they sell them? Yeah. So one of them was to bring back child slavery, for example. Um, one I still haven't got across the line, <laughs> but I'm hoping for in Series 3 is compulsory compulsory euthanasia for people over 80 <laughs> but uh, what the, one of the most famous ones we did was to declare to convince Australians to declare war on New Zealand yes and that was such a big story over here that it ran on the front page of New Zealand Herald well, and the defense it's minister it's not hard to get something on the front page no, that's <laughs> but, a good point. But, but it was probably very good yeah yeah and the defense yeah. minister made a comment about it <laughs> saying that New Zealanders had already invaded Bondi which I thought was pretty fair <laughs> but uh, and so then uh, you, you played a little bit of it at the start. We, in the second series, we uh, got New Zealand ad agencies to come up with campaigns to convince people not to go to Australia. Yeah. So um, it, basically what happens is these two ad agencies go away and make these professional ads. And at the end of them, you're more often than not convinced that, that, you, know, that you should actually do that thing. Yeah. And you also hinted, because um, you know, uh, when you're not doing the, um, the grow and transfer, of course, you're, you're also a comedian out on the road as well. Um, and you're here at the uh, the comedy festival in New Zealand, and I think you just hinted on perhaps what what your humour is like. You like to push the boundaries of what people might find acceptable. Oh yeah, I think that's probably true. Like I always used to say, I'm an equal opportunity discriminator. Huh. Like you know, anyone who deserves it has a crack. You yeah. know, and yeah, but it certainly um, uh, my show is. Uh, Look, you know, I don't never, I, I never have anyone walk out, so I can't be that particularly offensive. But I do have a lot of people go, ooh, yeah, like th- yeah. There's, there's a lot of that stuff in the show. Yeah, like, like I, mean, I guess I suppose would you say if people weren't going, oh, I don't know if I should laugh at that, uh, <laughs> then you're not doing your job. Yeah, I, I mean, I like that feeling. I yeah. like that feeling. No, my favourite one is this one where they laugh and then realise they shouldn't have laughed, yeah. so they go, ha, oh. <laughs> and then, then they feel angry at you, like you somehow tricked them Damn into you. laughing at something. That was my secret laugh that I use only at home, and yeah. only my close loved ones know that I would laugh at something like that. Now, everybody knows I'm laughing at that. Yeah. That's my favourite moment, for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, what's, I mean, what's your favourite place to be at the moment? Where do you like hanging out? Uh, look, you know, I, I'm, I'm a real touring comedian. I love, like, being on the road, because mm. I just love... I, you know, some people hate living out of the suitcase and doing that sort of stuff, but I love how funny the world is. Like, for example, when I was coming through New Zealand Customs, right, I made a little joke to the woman. Like I said, oh, Uh-oh. on um, on where it said uh, reason for trip, I said to her, I said, I was going to write to throw my ring into the fires of Mordor. <laughs> right? I thought a little, little funny Lord of the Rings joke. Yeah. This woman looked back at me and goes, hmm. well, that's a bit of an old reference, isn't it? <laughs> I got heckled at New Zealand Customs. Kind of good on her, I think, actually, as well. I know, but I was like, well, what have you done since? Yeah. Uh, it's hard for me to make right. jokes about the lovely bones. <laughs> Do something that's as famous as Lord of the Rings, yeah. and I'll start making jokes about that. You know? Yeah, this is true. Yeah. But I just um, got back from LA. Uh, I've been doing some shows over there, and uh, I've kind of been travelling around the world the last sort of six months, like taking my show on the road. So it's been really cool. Uh, I guess the, the trick would be, uh, you know, if you're performing to American audiences, is to appeal to their sense of humour as well. Well, as opposed to being a specific kind of Australian New Zealand humour, yeah, I think so. Although um, uh, someone described it because I'd done the UK, America, and Australia, and I think New Zealand's a bit the same, to be honest. Uh, they said the difference between the three audiences when Australia and New Zealand, you walk out on stage, they sort of go, "Bet you can't." Yeah. Um, in yeah. America, they go, "Yes, you can." Yeah. 
and in the UK they go, screw you for trying. Yeah. So that's basically the difference between the audiences. Yeah. Well, Anderson, um, so glad to have you in the studio talking with us um, and really looking forward to seeing more of the Grow and Transfer on Comedy Central starting May 4th. Thank you so much. Yeah. Cheers, Will.